Hey everyone, this is Matt Perez with Converge, and today we're going to kick off the fifth part of our blog video series on, yep, the same old thing, we're making whole patterns. So we've already covered several different ways that we can do this. In the first video in this series, we talked to simply just about global variables. We wanted to understand how we use global variables, how we set them up, how we can apply them in sketches and features. Then we actually got into using sketch references. We created some construction lines, we added some constraints, and we made sure that we understood how to create a curve driven pattern based on those references. That way, when we update the part, when we make it bigger or smaller, the pattern itself can change based on those references. We repeated that process in the third video, but this time we used a little bit of intelligence in the equations themselves by taking those original dimensions, the width of the box, the height of the box, those kinds of things, and we used those to calculate what the spacing would be for our part, how many instances we would end up having and how we would space them out. In the fourth video, if you guys are following along, we followed that same sort of process. However, this time, instead of just a simple equation, we added some if else statement functionality. And this time we were able to add some intelligence that allowed us to reduce the number of patterns that we had in the part based on the overall size. So we were able to add some of that conditional formatting that said, if the plate is less than 10 inches, the pattern is only five instances. If it's more than 10 inches, then the pattern is 10 instances and so on. So these are all very helpful things when you start to design these types of parts. But there's really no end to this, uh, unfortunately. I mean, there are many different ways that you can do this process. And each of them has their pros and cons, and it really just depends on the types of parts that you're designing. And this is why we felt it was important to really dive deeply into this subject, even though it seems like a fairly simple example of just making whole patterns on a part, um, in this case, very a very linear set of whole patterns. The application of what we're looking at in terms of global variables and equations and if-else statements and reference sketches, that can be applied to so many different things. So while the simple example here might not be exactly what you're modeling, you might come across an instance where you say, well, well, hey, those those references and that curve driven pattern works perfectly for what I'm doing. Uh, or, you know, maybe I really need that if else statement, that conditional statement to help me drive something that I'm doing. So the next step in this process from what we've done so far is to take a look at something called library features. So we're going to look at how to set up a library feature and what that really means in terms of functionality. So to this point, we have manually modeled everything which is perfectly fine. However, if you repeat that process over and over again, it gets a bit old and obviously it's repetitive. So we want to figure out how we can streamline that process. So the first thing that we have is just, again, a blank part. We're using the IPS unit system. We're going to come over to the right hand side in the design library and we want to click on the design library itself. I also want to pin this open. If you guys for some reason don't see your design library, make sure that you right click and this is going to be displayed by showing the task pane. So if you don't have that on your right hand side, you want to make sure that you show the task pane so that way you can access this information. What I've done is I've simply selected the design library and I'm going to create a new folder in here. So from the top, I want to select create new folder and I'm simply going to call this blog pattern test. Uh, it really doesn't matter at this point. This is not something that I'm going to keep. I just want to make sure that you guys understand uh, how to actually get in here, make some folders and put some stuff in here. There are plenty of other ways. And if you don't really use your design library, that's something that we should really dive deep in because you can add uh, different folder structures to the library. But there are some things that we need to understand when we're making specifically when we're making library features. So the first thing that we need to do when we're making a library feature is we need to define some base geometry. This is what essentially you're going to drag and drop this feature onto. Now, the stuff that we create here, this base, is not going to be used in the actual library feature. It won't be copied over. But for example, in the thing that we've been doing in the past four videos, we've just had a rectangular plate. So on the top plane, I'm going to create a sketch. I'm going to use a center point rectangle. And in this case, the dimension doesn't really matter, but I'm going to make it five by 10 just to keep it consistent. We're going to stop the sketch and we're going to extrude this. Uh, and again, the extrude distance doesn't really make sense here because we're going to be driving the feature itself. So I'm going to make it some oddball number 1.29 and just say, okay. 
now everything I do from here is going to be important because everything I do from this specific point is going to be included in the library feature. So now I'm going to sketch and the first thing I'm going to do is select the top face of my part. And again, this is important because we're going to drag and drop our feature onto some generic random part that we haven't made yet. And we need to have this planar reference. So whether it's a plane, whether it's this face, this is going to be important. So we want to select the face, then we want to create a new sketch. From here, we're going to follow the same process of these construction lines. We're going to snap to the left side. We're going to draw three lines and we're going to snap to the right, then double left click. We're going to snap to this point go straight up, double left click and just hit escape to get off the line tool. Now we want to make sure that these three lines are equal. So I'm going to make sure that all three of them are the same distance. I'm also going to come in here and I'm going to turn off my constraints. It gets a little too busy for me to see that. Next, we're going to apply some dimensions. So I'm going to give this a dimension, a one inch, but I want to rename this dimension. I'm going to call this edge offset. In this case, I'm using the same edge offset from the left side and the, uh, in this case, the top edge. That doesn't have to be the case. We could have individual dimensions on either side of this and be fine. But in my specific case, I want to make sure that um, I just make them equal. It just simplifies our example. Next, I'm going to put a circle right here. Again, I'm going to give it a half inch dimension. This is the same thing that we've been working on. Then I want to double click on this dimension and pull it out a bit. And I want to open up the properties. So I'm going to call this whole DIA, whole diameter. And again, the dimension at this point doesn't really matter. We're just going to make it half inch and then say, okay. Now I'm going to extrude cut that. And this is going to go through all again. Now, if we want to make it a blind value, if we want to make it a special whole wizard feature, we can do that. Uh, the whole wizard features will be accepted inside of these library features. But again, we're sticking with the same example that we've done. Next, I want to show my sketch two. So now I want to create a curve driven pattern. For direction one, we're going to select that reference line and the feature is going to be our cut extrude. We want to make sure that we pattern it across this whole curve, just like we did before. And we're going to have a number of instances and we'll set this equal to 10 for right now. We'll say equal spacing and it'll go all the way across and we can say, okay, it's a good idea to rename these. It's going to help us later. So when I double click on this feature, we can see the number of instances here and that number of instances currently is 10. And we really don't have to worry about pattern spacing because again, we're using these reference curves. So anytime you have a dimension such as a spacing dimension, it's always a good idea to make sure that you name those and you, and you link them and make sure you understand them because it, it'll help us in a little bit. Now that we have all of the basics, we have everything that we need here. The way that I'm going to create this is I'm going to select my cut extrude, control select my curve driven pattern. And here's the important part. Hold down the control key on the keyboard hold down the left mouse button and drag these over into your design library. Now we're inside of that blog pattern test folder I created. So over here, we want to save to file name and I'm going to call this CRV pattern, right? Curve pattern. It's going to save it in that blog pattern test folder and it's saving it as a library feature part. Then I'm going to go ahead and say, okay. And then here's the important thing. All right. On the left hand side inside of our manager you notice that some icons have changed we now have the sort of book icon for the library feature and we have little l's over both of these we also have references and dimension folders that are located in here before i do anything i'm going to close this part and not save it all right we don't want to continue to work with it we want to open the crv pattern one so we're going to right click and open that and go back into my feature manager so notice that this has the curve pattern SLD LFP SOLIDWORKS library feature pattern. So as we look in here, we have references, we have dimensions. All right. So inside of here, we have that placement plane. We have the left edge, we have the right edge and we have the upper edge. Those are going to be important because we're going to have to select those down here in the dimensions. We have edge offset. We have whole diameter, and then we have this uh, D one at curve pattern. All right, so that's it's going to be the number of instances because we didn't rename it. Uh, we could rename it uh, here. We can call it INST. 
What we want to decide here is if we want to require users to enter those values. For example, locating dimensions, the edge offset value, if I drag it into that locating dimension folder, then it's going to be something that pops up and it's going to ask them to input the value. It'll automatically use that default value if we want, but it'll allow them to, um, to see that instantly. If we leave them off, we can still override the values if we need. So right now, let's go ahead and save this, close it again, and just make a new part. We're going to make a new, uh, in this case, we're going to make a new just rectangular part. And again, the dimensions don't really matter. Let's go ahead and make it bigger than what we had before, uh, 10 by 20. So now if we fit to screen, you can see that we have a little bit larger plate. We're just going to extrude that out some uh, distance again. Let's just make it two inches. It's larger than what we had in our library feature part. Then from our design library, we're just going to drag and drop this onto our part. We have a preview here, and then we have this little window that pops up that allows us to rotate things around and look exactly what they're asking us for. By dragging and dropping onto that face, we've already selected the first placement plane. But now the next thing we need to do is select edge references one, two, and three. So looking at the preview in the window, we want to first select this left edge, then we want to select this right edge, then we want to select this upper edge. Now you'll notice the pattern has been created. The pattern is based on those edge references and the plane and the reference sketch that we created. You'll notice down here the edge offset locating dimension that we dragged into that folder. That's automatically placed in here and we can enter a value in, in this case two inches or we can enter a value three inches, whatever we need, we can modify that value from whatever we set. We also have a sizing dimension dropdown, which we can override the default values. If we decide that the hole needs to be one inch, for example, or the number of instances needs to be eight, we can manipulate those values and override them even though we didn't drag them into the locating dimensions. So this is great because it gives us control over everything that we created originally in that feature pattern so we can drag and drop it. We can use standard features like whole wizard features for PEM inserts. That's a great example if you're doing a consistent pattern on sheet metal parts. And also keep in mind that in this specific instance, we use those construction reference lines. So this way we had to select a face. We had to select the left, the right, and the top edge, and that helped us place it. However, this can be whatever feature you want. Uh, there are some limitations with library features, so I don't want it to sound all encompassing, but it doesn't have to be a circular cut. It doesn't have to be a curve driven pattern. It can be a standard hole pattern for bolting a flange or uh, anything that you guys really want that you use all the time, you can drag and drop it on. Just make sure that you follow those simple rules, set up your base part first. In this case, we just had a rectangular plate. If you're going to follow the same pattern examples that we've been doing, make sure that you actually go in and use those references, select the edges on that top face that you're using. Make sure that you drag and drop dimensions that you want to easily be manipulated. And also remember that you can override those values. So this is a great feature. I like to use it in very specific examples that I, um, again, whole patterns like this are a great example because it takes a little bit of time to set them up with these reference sketches and things like that. But just putting it in a library feature, dragging and dropping it, uh, for example, we can drag another one on here. Go ahead and select the left edge, the right edge, the upper edge, and we're done. Uh, easy as that, we were able to create that pattern based on the original parameters and we're done. So it's a lot quicker to do this once, set up a design library library feature and drag it and drop it. So as always, if you guys have any questions, please let us know, but we're gonna continue on this series. There's, uh, like I said, there's almost an endless number of ways that we can handle this, but we're gonna carry on and we're gonna do, uh, show you guys some more tips and tricks to set up this specific example, this type of part, but obviously this will uh, you know, apply across the board to all the things you're doing. So thanks for watching and hope to see you guys in the next one.